we kind of a little bit late. I'm gonna have to say, please introduce yourself. I'm, I'm you well, are. Well, my name is Analia Mejia. Analia Mejia. I am Mejia. co-executive director for the Center for Popular Democracy. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. I I I know that you guys are doing important work, but more most importantly, you are centralized on three issues that actually affect many BIPOCs. And these three issues are housing, mm -hmm. the environment, mm -hmm. and I forget the third. I mean, frankly, we work on issues that impact working class, working poor people right. across this country. So housing, access to health care, all the building blocks that allow us to right. thrive and... Wait a minute, I need ooh, ooh. to give... You know, <laughs> here, here we are, so... We just jumped we right just in. We just jumped right in. We so let, let's go ahead and start and again. And, by, okay. so, and we're live, by the way. Okay, okay? great. Well, so, hey, y'all. Yeah, Ma Mademoiselle Mejia. Yes. Tell us a little bit about who you represent and what you're doing. Okay, so the Center for Popular Democracy is a network of base-building, power-building organizations right. across the country. It's 48 organizations in 38 states, in Puerto Rico, in D.C., and our focus is the building blocks uh -huh. that allow communities to thrive. So you were saying affordable housing, right. access to health care, access to education, right. um, and more importantly, political power, governing power. I love that. What we're about yes. is if you are expected uh -huh. to adhere to the the rules of society right. to the rules of our government right. and you are not allowed to help shape them, then that's what's a bony deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What's the point? Yeah. Exactly. And our, when we talk about governing power, right. it is more than just showing up on election day and right. being, you know, sheep on GOTV, right. how some candidates like to treat our communities, right. but rather we want to show up for for the issues that matter for us on election day, and then we need those those who we get elected to right. show up for us exactly. every other day. After you've elected them. Exactly. Right. In fact, no, I would say we need them to show up on our issues during the campaign trail. Actually, you know, you're right about that because too often they come, they think they mm -hmm. have the vote, they leave, and mm -hmm. they're never back. Mm -hmm. Or they're afraid to yeah. talk about the issues that are keeping our families exactly. up at night. Exactly. And you know what? If you're too scared to talk about racism, you're too scared to talk about sexism, you're too scared to talk about the systemic injustice that happens in this country, then maybe you are too scared to govern and I, you shouldn't you know, get and you know what? And, and that is the issue. They they always say, "Let's get through this election." Yes. Wait. Yes. Wait. We're coming yeah. to we're coming to help you, but yes. we need to make you know we are always appeasing a particular mm -hmm. sect. Exactly. We're appeasing a particular sect yes. at your expense mm -hmm. for something that never ultimately comes through. Exactly. So, what is your group doing? to let folks know that they're already empowered to do what they need to do. So first and foremost, let me share with your audience that, you know, there are different types of organizations right. um, actually present here at, mm -hmm. at Netroots. You have organizations that are perhaps um, service organizations. Right. They provide a service to members of the community. You have other organizations that perhaps ad are advocacy organizations. Right. They advocate on behalf of a community. Right. But we do is we build power with people. I don't need to, you don't need a strong leader. You right. need the information right. to be able to engage. So first and foremost, let's let's be clear. Right. We have a system of representative government. That means that when we turn out and participate, right. people get elected. And when we don't, they don't. Exactly right. right. First and foremost. Second, there's power beyond election day. Right. There are city council meetings, county meetings. There are people who are deciding right now right. the trillions of dollars that are getting poured across right. our country around IRA. Yes. And showing up in city council meetings, county meetings, state legislative yes. meetings. That's how we're going to be able to win those resources into our community. You have to show up. You have to show up. You got to show up. But in order to show up well, right. you need the information. Right. So our base building, power building organizations mm -hmm. across the country, this is New Georgia Project. Right. This, who got uh, the first, the first black uh, senator yes. elected in, I in know, Georgia. Right. Or Lucha, who has been building the political power of communities of color in Arizona for some time and every day making greater traction or Detroit action a part of the magic that has happened in Michigan to uh -huh. flip those state legislative Completely districts. blue. Yes. So 
those organizations mm -hmm. are available to us, right. are a center in which we can engage and build our political power so that we have governing power in America. I, I like that. First of all, I love your energy. Oh, well, thank and if you. you. And if you can throw that energy yeah, out there to la gente. <laughs> bueno, vamos. Si vamos a hablar con la gente, tú sabes bueno, que va a pasar eso. Okay. Let me tell you something. So here's yeah. the deal. Uh, what about Minnesota? Were you guys participants in Minnesota as well? So uh, we have an affiliate called yeah. Take Action Minnesota. Did, were they involved? Because Minnesota got a one vote ab mm -hmm. away from uh, not ha not being a, what you call it, state. And they got so much lit. Exactly. 400, over yeah. 400 years of... Um, it's it's yeah. incredible. It is the power of when our communities yes. are... Uh, honestly, uh, our communities have been participating right. from the beginning, even despite all the hurdles. Right, right. But it is when we act in unison. It is when we organize that right. magical things happen. Here's the other thing I would say to your folks, why this moment mm -hmm. matters in particular. Right. When we look at the history of this nation... Right. And moments in which black and brown people have gained right. governing power, let's say right after the Civil War yeah. and Reconstruction, Reconstruction and when you have yeah. over 2,000 black men, once black men are given the vote, over 2,000 black men get elected into, into office. Not only uh, federal, All but the, state yes, as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. What do we get? Public education. Right. We get investments in our communities. We get um, bargaining power for for farmers, or for the formerly the formerly enslaved. Yeah. And what? How is that governing power met? It is met Resist. by resistance, resistance, by a clapback that mm -hmm. takes shape in right. three key ways. Yeah. Violence. Right. Systemic disenfranchisement. Yes. Or machinations. Yeah. And a. Supreme Court that, that rules against and, and, the and people. The undemocratic yes. Supreme Court, because we know that yes. the Supreme Court is the only part of right our here. government yes. that isn't a democracy. So you know what I'm about to say, right? Let me finish it. Well, let's take a moment and consider where we're at right yeah. now. We have state section violence. Right. We have a Supreme Court that has been taken over yes, and that is actively complicit in systematically disenfranchising yes. the black, uh, black and brown people yes. and our political power. And you see it over and over and over again. It's not just Reconstruction and now. Think about what happened after the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. The same thing. When, when our communities lift up their voice, mm -hmm. act in unison, and work on behalf of our collective interests. And this isn't about black, brown, white. Well, well you know, it, what is funny is the following. Mm -hmm. when, when things go right for BIPOCs, it goes, it goes right, right for, for everybody. everybody because the people included yes, there are those right. poor people, poor white that's folks right. in Appalachia that's and right. all, because nobody cares about them. Say but it us, twice. Say right? it twice. When, when we, when we right. pay attention to folks on the margin, right. We uplift all communities. And here's the thing, this people who are on the margins yes. are also the margin of victory. A, you know, <laughs> a, a, imagine that, right? Yeah. Imagine uh, that. Who knew so, if so we only knew that? The, the thing about it is mm -hmm. that is what has to be taught. That's because right. uh, those folks that are on the margin and and, mm -hmm. and and I hate to say, but specifically like folks in Appalachia that continues mm -hmm. to vote against your interests. Uh, and for for those folks that are BIPOC as well that allow themselves to be coerced, not into voting wrong, but simply not voting at all or not making the effort to vote, that is what has to be. So part part out. of what is what, at least my perspective yeah. is that our communities, there's mm -hmm. so much, I mean, daily existence, right. when you are trying to keep body and soul together, right. when you are trying to uplift your, uh, raise your family with, right. without a safety net, without the resources that we all right. know we need to thrive. As we said, those building blocks right. of power, then of course you don't have the space hey. to, to actually, to critically analyze the information exactly. that's coming in or, 
and and to add to that we have you started to say we need to we need that information we need to teach that information it is exactly the reason why there is this wholesale rejection of critical race theory education of you know pa- don't say gay yes. all of these things they are they, it is a burning banning books it is a two pronged approach and you know if you, if you've learned false history all your life Cristobal Colón mm-hmm. era buena persona mm-hmm. Christopher mm-hmm. Columbus yes. was a yes. great guy yes. and 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 AJ a, a Christopher Columbus was a great guy mm-hmm. and the fact of the matter is wait anybody who said well let's let's put it into some perspective mm-hmm. we're not even saying we're not even telling the fool mm-hmm. to bring you down completely yes. let's let's just tell the story yeah, and you decide be- Honest. Let's be honest Let's about be honest. Thomas Jefferson. Right. George Washington. Yes. Our founding fathers. Tell the story. Who were who struggled right. with the cognitive dissonance right. of pushing for freedom and owning human beings. Exactly. And they chose to strike a deal exactly to build a republic on the backs of black people I mean, that happens i mean and and and, and that somebody want, doesn't want that to be taught you know i mean l- learn that we had our deficiencies mm-hmm. and we lived and went past them yes. it's not all that difficult that's right and you know but the truth the problem is this the truth makes people uh, when they don't have the truth they can feel superior yes but if you know the truth, you realize, guess what? We're all just damn human beings. That's right. That's, That's right. That's all we are. That's human right. Human beings, flawed as we come. That That is right. And we are, speaking of being human beings, it is, it behooves human beings right. for us to figure this out in this moment because we are not going to have a livable planet. Exactly. We are not going to have an actual Housing. democracy. We are not going to survive what is coming right. to human beings on this planet right now because the threat of food insecurity, water insecurity, an uh, unlivable planet will result in violence. It is amazing how many fail to see it. Yes. Yes. It's amazing. It behooves us to figure it out. It is it is the most, I mean, we talk about what is the most existential or the most critical fight that right. we must engage in. And I think it is, at this moment, it is educating and connecting and organizing across communities to start, to, to be frank, we need to prioritize people over capital over money oh my god why, why are you gonna why are you gonna open <laughs> oh, another line of discussion well, young you lady know, you know let's i do mean it. why are you gonna so, do why are, I mean, we, we why, why are we gonna, and do why are we gonna talk about capital <laughs> now you know that you must watch my program i i most certainly let me tell you something what is amazing mm-hmm. to me yeah. is that we have in this nation we have uh, we have an aversion we like to to reject the or some of us right. some of the powerful like to reject the idea of collective goods thank you right and and we denounce it as socialism or we denounce it as un-american right and we say capitalism is you know unhindered right. will set us free well first of all capitalism left to its own devices sold people yes let's not forget and the bottom line is that our humanity, like, I don't eat money. Right. Right. I don't breathe money. No. My children will not You thrive. can't eat it. No, you cannot. Yeah. So if we are prioritizing, mm-hmm. if we're allowing by our silence, by our lack, lack of activism, or by not calling the question on elected officials who are very content to prioritize their, their fundraising right. to their constituents, right. then all we are doing is putting all of us in peril. History has told us that that is what will happen. This movie, we have seen this movie before. We know how it ends. And it is the moment for us to act. And in the past, what got us out is organizing. And that is what is going to make it happen again. Ooh, I see we have uh, royalty in the the house. We have royalty in the house. (laughs) Well, you know. Come on in. I think I'm going to No, no, no. Wait, let's close. We're coming right now, Maurice. Uh, Let let me tell you, first of all. Yes. has been my pleasure, Ms. Oh, Mejia, it to has speak been to you. And awesome. we, we Thank have you. to do this again yeah. because very few people understand these concepts in the aggregate. Well, they, I, they feel it. 
Oh, you're about to have fire come I know at I'm about you, to have so, fire. They so. feel it. But you know what? You bring it. Well, I Thank appreciate you so it. Thank you so for much. Having been Thank on you so much. Oh, well, I appreciate you know, the, it. The, yep, yep. That I got there. it. And you know, we'll, we, we got to talk again because that's a very important right. subject and we need Let's to it. move it forward, okay? All right. All right. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share.